What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, hello, my name is Shara. Welcome, how are you? Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me just get that out of the way now. Of course, we're all here because you wanna know what I have been favoriting as far as beauty favorites go. I was very hesitant on calling this my 2017 beauty favorites. We are pretty late in the game. It is middle of January and I'm now just thinking of all the stuff that I have been loving lately. And then I kind of have it all out right now. I'm looking and I'm like, this is actually pretty much what I've been loving for the whole year of 2017 with things that I haven't mentioned. Let me just call it that because I know that there are some current favorites that I have right now that I have not included into this whole pile. I want to save that for the next favorite video. I'm just going to jump right into skincare. The first thing that I want to mention were some prep sprays. The first one that I do want to shout out is this Mario Badescu facial spray and this is the one with the aloe, cucumber, and green tea. Um, amazing as far as like calming my skin. I used it on my beauty blender. I used it to freshen up. I used it as a prep spray. I used it as a setting spray. I used it for pretty much everything. It was just so calming and it just made my skin feel very hydrated. I actually have a new bottle right here because I went through like a couple of these bottles this year. have to mention the Pixie Hydrating Milky Mist. This I'm almost out of. I don't know how much of it you can see but it's like literally like down to here. It's a youth person preserving mist. I applied this before I applied my moisturizer and all that as well. So I was like bouncing between these two as far as like a prep spray goes. And I do have a favorite toner and that is the Pixi Glow Tonic. It's like the way it made my face feel. It made it feel super clean, nice and toned and balanced. I have two moisturizers that I did want to share and the first one is this Yes to Cotton moisturizer. This is the ultra sensitive and allergy prone skin and it protects and minimizes irritation. I am pretty sure you have seen this in one of my like last favorites. I know I was using this quite a bit and I still still use it. I did mention that I would get like some like hives like here and there especially in Arkansas. I'm pretty sure when we lived there I don't know if it was like the pollen the weather or whatever it was but it like kind of freaked my skin out and drove it crazy. Every time I feel like my skin is irritated or if I feel like I've been wearing makeup for the whole day and I could feel like my skin is getting irritated I'll go ahead and put this on. I'm using this more of like a nighttime moisturizer after I've removed everything everything off my face and then during the day I have been loving the peach slices citrus honey aqua glow this is a hydrating moisture gel I've been kind of loving the gel moisturizers lately because it just feels so lightweight on my skin I can feel it just like getting in there and actually hydrating up my skin and so I'm just like sitting on top of it this one has grapefruit orange honey extract rebalance soothes and nourish and plump great for all skin types and as far as an eye cream goes I've been using this air repair super hydrating eye Eye cream, ultra soothing antioxidants, some properties of vitamin C, green tea extract, and cloudberry seed oil. It feels very soothing and hydrating underneath the eyes and I did get this little sample in my Ipsy and I've had it for a minute now and I still have plenty of life left in it. Another eye cream favorite that I thought I had and I ended up throwing out when I was like de-stashing and cleaning up my room was the Mario Badescu Gel Under Eye Moisturizer. I absolutely loved that as well. It was very soothing, very lightweight underneath the eyes and I used that the majority of the year. I was gonna get another one but I have like so many other eye creams that I wanted to try out so I was like let me just give that a break and switch it up a little bit. As far as like a makeup remover goes, I mean I bounce all over the place with like makeup removers, makeup wipes, micellar water, all that. But one that I've been really, really loving lately is the Yes to Cotton Eye Makeup Remover Pad. Not only just use this for eye makeup, I kind of use it for everything else, but this stuff is the business. Like I literally just like lay it on my eye and just like swipe it all off and it comes off super nicely. I don't have to get in there and rub. This is like the moisturizer. That's why I wanted to give it a try. Around my eye area, it can get a little sensitive. So moving on to face products. So the primers that I have been using nonstop lately and for a hot minute now is the Benefit Pore Professional. This is like one of my little guys sample sizes but um, I've been using this thing for a minute and it's still pretty full. I mainly focus this around like my nose area because I did notice once we moved here to San Diego like my pores were starting to open up on my nose and it was kind of freaking me out because I was like this has never happened. You can barely see my pores but I'm guessing it has maybe a little something something to do with some old age because your girl's getting old. I don't want to admit that but it's happening. Also noticing that my 
my skin is starting to react to that as well aging so much fun so much fun right it's definitely blurred my pores out and also laid the foundation around my nose area very well because I noticed that foundation was starting to break on my nose too and ever since I started using this it hasn't been like that and then I like to put the Maybelline Vegas skin on the rest of my face and I just like the way that this product feels it just feels very nice it smooths out the rest of my pores and I just like that there is like a layer of protection base whatever you want to call it between your skin and the foundation so this has been working really well I have a couple foundations that I did want to mention and of course the first one is my ride or die like literally ride or die the wet n wild photo focus foundation I have probably mentioned this in every single video that I do mention a foundation in within the past year like this is my ride or die we go back like this is my homegirl she knows the deal she keeps all my secrets. Those dark circles, she covers it. So she goes in, and when she doesn't go in, I've been loving the Maybelline Matte and Poreless foundation. It doesn't hurt to mix the two, and that's what I've been also doing. Love the formulas together, so these have been working really well. I do have more normal to dry skin. Really love that matte look, and it doesn't like break up or crease in like my fine lines weirdly or anything like that either. And as far as highlight goes, I had to mention the Tarte Shape Tape. My go-to for all all of 2017 and then I replaced the Tarte Shape Tape for the Maybelline Age Rewind concealer because I wanted to see how it worked and then I wanted something that wasn't like you know so full coverage something for more like everyday type makeup this one was really good as far as your everyday but if you're looking for like super full coverage very like there in your face you gotta go with Tarte Shape Tape. This stuff is amazing. The main areas that I do color correct is my under eye just because I feel like I got some blues and purples underneath there. I make sure that I do cover that up before I put on my foundation. I've been loving the City Color Photo Chic color corrector. I've used a lot of it because I've hit pan like whoa. It pretty much is very comparable to my NYX under eye corrector. To set my foundation I've been of course loving the Wet n Wild press powders, the photo focus press powders. I started getting a little too dark for these and this was like the darkest that they had. I think it was like the golden tan. I feel like it's not that dark. Yeah, I need it to be maybe a couple shades darker. There's like a couple shades that are a little bit too dark in the line, which I have this one in Coco, and I do actually like contouring with this. They feel super, super soft on the skin, and I love the finish that it gives. It's very, very, very soft. It just goes right into the fine lines, and it just sets your foundation beautifully. Just wish that they had a shade a little bit darker than this one so I can still use this. Since I haven't been using these lately, I have been going to my Urban Decay Naked Skin Ultra Definition Powder, and this one I've hit pan in. Absolutely love this one. This one is a medium gold. This is like my shade right now. If they had this shade in this pressed powder, I would be definitely all over it, but they don't. That's my struggle. And as far as setting the highlighted areas, I've been loving the Ulta Pressed Setting Powder. This one is in the shade Banana, and I've used the crap out of this one. Absolutely love, love, love this one. I bake with the Makeup Revolution Luxury Powder in Banana. I have used all year. Love this. It's a great dupe for Ben Nye, even though Ben Nye is pretty affordable. A luxury powder that you're able to get in store and you don't have to like go online and search all over for it. It's available at Ulta and you can just go in, pick it right up. And I know that they came out with some other baking shades. So I was very, very happy to see that they did come out with that. I have two bronzers that I wanted to share. This one by the Glamour Dolls and Lisa Frank collab. This one I got in my Ipsy and this one is in the shade Bitten and Bronze. It is a matte bronzer. And I actually been using this a ton lately. I do have it on today and I feel like it just gives me enough warmth on the skin. I love the fact that it came in this like super cute packaging. Like who doesn't love Lisa Frank? I'm gonna go back into the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Like I showed you previously, I did have a darker shade. This one is in Cocoa. And this one is great for warming up my skin without making it too like cool tone. Contour shades can get more on the cooler tone side and lately I feel like it's been making me look a little dead because I've been super tan and with me being super tan and then you're throwing on a cool tone bronzer shade it's making me look ashy in a way. I love the way that it warms up my skin and it's doubling as a bronzer contour shade. So I did have a few highlighters that I wanted to share. The first ones that I did want to mention are the Wet n Wild highlighters. They say on the packaging that they both are limited edition and Wet n Wild has been killing it this 
2017 year because they came out with some amazing products. Not to mention that they are affordable, they're easy to access, they know what they're doing. They're definitely stepping up their game and they've been stepping up their game because they've been coming out with some bomb, bomb, bomb products. This one is from their Mermaid Collection and this one is in Midnight Moon. I know a lot of people did mention that they weren't a fan of this highlight because it comes out like a, like a dusty, like gold iridescent shade, but I actually liked it. I feel like it worked really well on my skin. It just looked very pretty. Every time I wore it, I got compliments on it, so that tells you something right there. And then I do have the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder, and this one is in Lilac to Reality. This I got in my Beautycon bag when I went to Beautycon in August. Did I go in August? I think it was in August, which I definitely had a blast at. I actually have it on right now, and you can see how like when the light just hits it, it goes in. A lot of people think that it looks too cool toned on medium toned skin, but I feel like I can pull it off. It looks good on me, and it's makeup. It comes right off. You ain't gotta worry about it being there forever, you know what I'm saying? So my last highlighting favorite is actually a palette, and I definitely had to include her in my Anastasia Nicole Guerrero collab palette. I've used this quite a ton and I haven't hit pan on it. I've dipped into every single one of them and every single one of them just speaks to me. They're amazing, they're beautiful, I absolutely love the formula of them. They're stunning, stunning highlighting shades and I use them on my lid, in my inner corner, I highlight obviously my cheekbones. I'm going in with this palette. When in doubt, I always pull this palette out for highlight and she always delivers. My last thing for face is a setting powder, which I had been using a ton of. I went through a few of these. The Makeup Revolution Pro Fix Illuminating Fixing Spray. Definitely love this setting spray. Makeup Revolution is another one of those brands that go in with their products. They're affordable, absolutely love their brand. The other setting spray that I did go in, like I said, was like the Mari Badescu spray. So I was kind of switching back and forth between the two. Had to let you guys know what was good with him. So moving on to eyes, I feel like this is where I'm starting to kind of not remember everything I use because I only have two eyeshadow palettes here. First one that I want to mention is this Anastasia Prism and this did not come out till like towards the end of the year. But I did want to mention him because I did use him a ton, a ton. The quality of the shadows were amazing. I absolutely loved it. I do have the Subculture palette. I did want to include him in but I feel like it'd be like too much Anastasia I guess. I don't know. But I liked the Subculture palette personally. Um, yeah, it did take work to blend out and kind of mess with. And it's definitely not an eyeshadow palette to kind of like throw something on and go out the door. It was definitely something where if you wanted to sit down and do your makeup and play with it, that was the palette to do it with. Go in and blend out and just made sure that everything was where you wanted it because you could have easily messed things up. But other than the Prism palette, I definitely wanted to also mention the Makeup Revolution Ultra Eye Contour Light and Shade palette. And I know that this palette kind of had some controversy because because obviously like Kat Von D had her shade and light palette which was very identical to this one and you like to be cheap and affordable then this is something that I would definitely recommend. Um, I use this a ton lately. Every time I went on to travel and was out of town I always brought this with me because I feel like I could create so many different looks. I can make a simple everyday look or turn it into a nighttime look with just this one palette. And of course I had highlighting shades and stuff that I brought with me so I could use that as a shimmer if I wanted like a pop of shimmer or whatnot but this palette was definitely my go-to as far as like a matte palette goes and who doesn't love matte neutrals everyone in the mom loves matte neutrals so you cannot go wrong with a matte neutral palette and I like that they did add like some cool tones neutrals and then you have like your warm tones in the palette as well so you can love it everything to create infinite eye looks which is a plus in my book <laughs> I do have a mascara favorite and of course it is the L'Oreal voluminous lash paradise and this mascara, dude, I found my dupe for the Too Faced Better Than Sex because this is literally a very, very, very good dupe for it. You can see in my bottom lashes alone that it gives it so much volume. The formula of this mascara is amazing. Absolutely fell in love with it. First time I tried it, I was like, I knew this was gonna be a definite favorite for sure. And as far as a black liner, which I use to mainly line my waterline, it's been this Beauty For Real 24-7 eyeliner. It is just a regular black liner, but it glides on so nicely on my upper waterline. I've been using this for the whole year and it still has 
hasn't run out. I got it in like my Ipsy a long time ago and it's still been holding it down as far as lashes go. I have the Red Cherry Lashes in just the Berkley's, which I did have a few of these. This is like my last pair, so I'm kind of like don't want to use it, but I know I want to, but I'm not trying to. I should probably just use it because I know I'm just going to end up ordering more. Love the Berkley's. Of course, the Wispies. I also have the Ardell Double Up, and these are the Double Wispies, and I love these. You can just see the volume in them, and then they also have a thin, clear band. I actually am a fan of the clear bands because I have small eyelids, and when I have a thick black band, like you can see it, and it kind of gets annoying, and it's too thick, and it's very heavy in my eyes. Clear bands don't do that, and I like that they did add some layers in the Double Up Wispies, so it gives it some volume. Definitely a fan of that. Also use the Andrea 91s. It does layer as well. It can kind of get very uncomfortable because the thin black band just kind of pokes my inner corner, which I end up having to like cut more of. But I mean, I dig it. I definitely like the way that these also looked at my eye. Let's talk about some brows. The first brow product that I didn't want to mention is the Makeup Revolution Brow Pomade. This was my go-to, like legit go-to. You can see it's definitely barely put a dent in the top of it. This one is in the shade Dark Brown. It did get kind of drying and when it did get kind of drying, I just added some Tarte Maracuja oil in there. It was good as new. Sometimes the Ebony and the Anastasia one just kind of made my brows look super dark and harsh. The shade made my brows look soft yet very defined. And I've also been digging brow pencils lately and the one that I really do want to mention, I don't have because I ran out of it, but it was the ColourPop brow pencil in black brown. If you saw my ColourPop video recently that I just uploaded like a couple videos ago, you can see that I've been using it and that's like my go-to. I used it so much. You, obviously I don't have it anymore because I used all of it. And to clean up my brows, it's just been the go-to ride or die NYX Above and Beyond Full Coverage Concealer and pretty sure I've mentioned this one and like all my favorites still using it might as well right <laughs> I for some reason can't find any of my lip products but I know that I've been using a lot of the NYX matte lip creams I know that's like my go-to brown nude shades are my go-to the soft matte lip cream in Dubai there's also one very similar to this one and it is called Berlin and I kind of just rotate between the two you can have a smoky dramatic look or you can have like an everyday look and this lip will go great with both looks definitely had to mention him even though I mentioned him all the time. I have not mentioned this product, but I've been loving, 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 loving the Jordana Sweet Cream Matte Liquid Lip Color. This one is in the shade Cinnamon Toast. This is actually the shade that I do have on my lips right now. I have been digging it. It feels so, so comfortable on the lips. Very lightweight. It gets where it needs to go and it literally doesn't budge. It's transfer proof. It formula is amazing. Definitely want to mention them. If you haven't tried these, go give them a try. I got mine at Walgreens. Get you one. I love it. You need it. For sure. And last for the lips, lip care products. Probably heard me mention this one, but it is the Ulta Beauty Juice Infused Lip Oil. This one is in Sweet Rose, and this is just very hydrating. I like to put it on like before I start my makeup, just let the extra oil and hydration just hit it. Because I know I usually choose like a matte lip to go with my look. I don't want my lips looking crusty. And I also use this one at night too, like after I get a shower, just kind of hydrate those lips. And when I'm not using that one, I'm using this one. This is a Neutrogena Hydro Boost and this is a hydrating lip treatment with hyaluronic acid. You cannot go wrong with that. And lastly, I've been loving these chapstick little duo things. I usually just carry this one mainly in my purse. Use a ton of it versus the other side. The other side has like a shimmer to it. I'm not really a fan of it. I totally see that this side it's like worn out and I've been into it a lot lately. Holy crap, I think I got through all of my favorites. Yes, that's awesome. Like this video if you enjoyed watching and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I greatly appreciate it. I'll also also list my Twitter, my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Snapchat, my vlogging channel, all around here. All the links will be down below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!